Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? I have another guitar to restring and shine up today. Uh, this guitar is called a Main, M-A-N-E. Um, let's take a look at it. Let's put some new strings on it. So, row the intro. This guitar, again, the headstock on it, it says Main, M-A-N-E. And I think what this guitar is, I think this is local to the Phoenix area. So rumor that I heard is that Precision Guitar in Phoenix was making these guitars. And so, uh, you know, this is a tally shape. Looks like it has a nice uh, maple cap on here and um, some P90s and uh, kind of a very unique guitar. It does have the locking Spurzel tuners on here. And so our first step to get these strings off is to just loosen these. Well, I guess, you know what, no. The first step is to loosen the strings. Yeah, so I think about 20 years ago or so, Precision Guitar was making these handmade guitars. And this is the second one that I've seen. Seeing that I, you know, live in Phoenix. And uh, I've had a couple customers tell me about them real quick. So... With these locking tuners, the strings should just come right out. Okay. And it's not, but it should. There it goes. Just got to tug on it a little bit. This video is brought to you by Swiss Picks. It's not just a pick. It's a science. Available at Zim's Guitars or at www. Dot .swisspicks.com All right, so this tailpiece, there we go. This is the stop bar. And I'm just going to pull the strings right out. There it goes. And we've got lots of gold hardware on this piece. Here is the uh, bridge and it looks very much like Gibson where it has the small pieces right here that, that uh, set on the these uh, adjusters and that looks like something from a Gibson and then let's get in here and look at this really close so it does have this really nice top what is this sort of a curly maple kind of thing and then I can feel underneath here that, yep, there's a solid block that goes across. But it's kind of down in there quite a ways. So overall, it's still kind of a heavy guitar. Um, the fretboard, if we look at the condition of this fretboard, the fret ends are, are really rough. It does have this uh, evolution style of fish inlay right here. I can sort of feel it a little bit on some of the edges there, but the frets are in really, really bad condition. And then right here, it looks like it has a really thick fretboard on it. So maple neck, but a really, really thick fretboard. And again, right here, it, it looks kind of sloppy right here it does not look real professional right there I think they sold a lot of these though but I don't know what a lot is but it looks kind of sloppy right there and so the truss rod is in the heel you got to pull the neck off of it to get to the truss rod so unfortunately that's what we're going to do now. Let's pull the neck off of it. You know, don't really like this idea of having to pull the neck off of it. But I think that's what we're up against on this one. I'm just going to lay it flat and grab a 
Phillips screwdriver. And let's pull the neck off. Okay, so this screw is a nice long one. This one's going to be a little shorter of a screw. Because it does sort of have a curved area right here. More of a contoured area. Let's see if I can get that. Yep. And those screws are different sizes. Okay, now this screw is going to be longer, and this one should be the same, the same size. Okay, so when we put the neck back on, we have to be aware of the fact that the screws are different sizes, so it should lift right out of here, and it does. So I'm going to go ahead and set the body to the side for a second. We're going to look at this neck. So yeah, the, again, the size of the fingerboard on this is thick. You usually don't see them that thick. And uh, let's see, we got our truss rod adjustment in there. So if I put my straight edge, I have the notched straight edge. Neil, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. All right, so let's see. Is it a short scale? Yes, it is. So let me see if I can get this up in the camera where you guys can see that. Okay, this is my notch straight edge, and you might be able to see that, um, you know, it looks pretty flat, but we don't have any strings on it right now. Let me see if I can find a wrench that fits in here. All right, so I have a wrench in here that I think is the right size. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to tighten this. Okay, that feels pretty tight right there. But I can still see that there is some relief in the neck. I'm going to take a pair of pliers and I'm so I can grab a hold of this real good and I'm gonna really twist on it. Okay. I don't know if that even really turned. Yeah, so. Let's see if it made any difference. It didn't really make any difference, so I don't think the truss rod in this guitar is working properly, and I really don't think that it's worth a shit, to be honest with you guys. This is the worst thing, but this is sort of what happens with handmade guitars. You know, uh, it's really hard to get everything just right. Plus this wrench isn't really fitting in there as nicely as I'd hope it would. I'm going to try to loosen it this time. There we go. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't want to go forward or back or anything. But uh, that looks, it kind of looks pretty straight now that I actually tugged on it like that. I don't know. I don't think there's much I'm going to be able to do with that truss rod. So I'm just going to work on the fret ends. 
You know, I took this guitar in, in, in a trade, and I'm in it very, very cheap, okay? I hardly have any money into it. But I am still going to make the most out of what I've got here. So let's work on the fret ends and get them in good condition. And then I'll polish the frets a little bit. And uh, we got to just make the most of what we got here. Okay, there's one swipe. When it feels better, and there is a binding on there. I don't think I'm damaging the binding. This is my new fret file that I got from Stu Mac a month or two ago. And the bottom of it is flat. So it shouldn't do any damage to that binding. Okay, yeah. I just messed it up a little right there. Not too bad. Okay, so now I have some of this Stumac micro mesh, and I'm going to take one of these pads that's not real abrasive. There we go. And I'm just going to hit the sides like this. That feels better. Let's do this side, same thing. Okay. So there we go. Feels good. And then for the frets, I'll take my fret guard, set it on here, and I have a little thousand grit sandpaper. And I'm just trying to polish them up. So, okay. So look at the third fret right here up close, right? This one. So you can see some dirt, maybe even it looks like it's starting to get rusty. Let me, let me clean this one real quick and show you what it does. A couple of quick swipes. Okay. It's that easy. Okay, here we are. It's just right, right here. So, right? Nice and easy. Looks better. It's got a nice little shine to it. Okay, all right, now the old F1 oil, put a couple of drops on here, I imagine that this guitar has never uh, had anything cleaned, because the strings were really in rough shape on this thing. 
So this might possibly the, be the first time that it's been cleaned. All right, so let me get in here and I'll show you guys what the fretboard looks like now that it's been cleaned. Okay, and uh, maybe just a little bit of some black Sharpie. Just to try to disguise that a little bit. Really ugly. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to, I cut a piece of sandpaper, real thin little thing, and I'm going to lay it down in here as a neck shim. Phil McKnight was the guy that said, oh, just use a little bit of sandpaper. And I'm like, really? But it'll smash. No, it won't. Use sand. Um, okay. So I'm going to put these right back in the same spot they came out of. If it was me, I would probably prefer to have a different setup back here. These screws look a little small to me, and I don't know. I'm telling you guys, I'm not really in love with this guitar. You guys can probably, you guys probably know kind of what I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, after it's, uh, it's got strings on it, it might be pretty cool. Let me turn my amp on. And we'll test the electronics before a bunch of strings go on. Okay, they seem to be working. Okay, I'm going to do one other step to this guitar. Just because I'm here, I'm going to put a little bit of some of this uh, turtle wax on here. And uh, it doesn't really need it, but I'm just going to set and shine up this top piece a little bit. Put a little turtle wax on it. Not going to get my drill out, my buffing pad or anything.
Throw some on the pickup rings. On top of these P90s. This is a nice top on this guitar. I will say that about it. I don't like the neck. I'm not a big fan of the binding on the neck or, uh, you know, where, especially where that truss rod is at. But I will say that this uh, maple cap looks really nice. So let me let that set for a second and then I'll just wipe it down. I have a clean rag. I took all my shop rags home and I ran them through the, ran them through my washing machine twice. Shining up my guitars all the time. Shining up guitars. Cause this is a nice top, so you have to do what you can do to highlight this. And if that's by trying to get it to be nice and clean and shiny looking, I mean that's that's okay. Okay, it's time for some strings. And so what I have here at the shop, and I will show you, I have some strings right here. And I just have my E strings and my A strings and, and so I have a there's like 50 packs right here that I have on the wall. And I'm just going to use these. And I believe they're 10 gauge, so just gotta make sure you grab the right ones out of here. So here I believe is my little E string. And just to make sure, I'll take my calipers and Look at that, and that looks like a 42. Okay, and I got the Spurs of Locking Tuners on this guitar. So it should be easy just to stick them right through here. I can find the hole. There it goes. And you just kind of tighten them. And then you go ahead and tighten the wheel at the bottom. And There it is, make sure it's down there. Okay, so let me reach over here and grab an A string out. This looks like a 32. And uh, one thing that I will show you guys, because the neck is so thick right here, it doesn't give you much room on your tuners, right? So, uh, you know, another thing that, in my opinion, isn't quite right about the neck on this guitar. So uh, I, I think a lot of guitar manufacturers, these little guys that build their own custom guitars, I think making a nice body is one thing. <clears throat> but when you build your own neck, that's where some of these smaller brands, they, they fall short. And uh, there's a lot of complaining going on that the necks aren't so great. And that is not an easy job to build a the perfect neck. 
But if you just get necks from, uh, you know, all parts or someplace, then it's, it's more of a parts caster than your own uh, build, right? So you don't want to just get a warmth neck and put on something. You, to really make it your own, you want to build your own neck. But man, it's not easy to build a neck. Okay, let's tune it. All right, guys, so here it is. The brand is called a main M A N E. And like I said, uh, I'm pretty sure precision guitars. Um, in Phoenix, Arizona, built these things. saying during the video the body on this thing is it's really nice the top looks good it's a used guitar the back of it I can see it's mahogany and it's got a lot of dings and little dents and stuff in it but that top looks really really pretty on this thing the hardest part though about building a custom guitar is getting the neck right and to me this feels like a really wide kind of a U-shaped neck, so because it's flat along the bottom. It's got a lot of gloss on it, something that I don't really dig too much. Let me tune it up one more time. Strings are still stretched out. I just put the strings on it five minutes ago. Okay, okay, here we go. The A string still in, the D string a little flat. G string, of course, is flat. customers come in and say and tell me a little history on these and so again that's what I was thinking precision guitar in Phoenix Arizona out there in our awesome guitar world runs into one of these kind of guitars I just wanted to give you a little heads up on where I think they came from again the headstock says Maine and uh, it's kind of a fun guitar and this one is for sale down at Zim's Guitars thank you guys for watching and make sure to go out and buy a guitar mm -hmm.